All right, so, so you guys saw in the title, we are doing the Three Sisters ride today. The Three Sisters ride is supposed to be a beautiful ride with some twisties and some hill, uh, small mountain roads around the Frio River, uh, northwest area of where San Antonio is in Texas. Uh, I believe he covers the FM 335, 336, 337 uh, highways in a loop. So it's supposed to be a really cool ride with some good scenery. So I'll try to document everything I can throughout the ride and where we stop at and this and, and, and what. So I'm going to have a 25 minute ride to a gas station where I'm going to meet up with Pedro, a local rider here that I met at uh, coffees and bikes that I go to and he's done this ride uh, before so I'm gonna follow him around it'll be my first time on the ride it's about 60 degrees outside so I'm just gonna throw on a hoodie on top of the shirt that should be good enough and then we'll just take off the hoodie probably later as the day warms up I'm gonna start the bike get things on it and I'm gonna get the bike outside and we're gonna have to move the bike right down the road quickly because it's seven in the morning. I'm trying not to wake up the neighbors. So let's get on with the ride and I'll see you on the road. All right guys, so remember, every time you're gonna go on a ride, don't be the one showing up to the kickstart of the ride with no gas, so that then the bikes have to stop just a couple blocks on the road, just to fuel up. However, I have 100 miles range left on the bike here, so it's not topped off, but since we're meeting at a gas station, we're obviously gonna top off there before we hit the road, so, I'm just going to head there and then I'll top off there before we hit the road. Alright, let's turn on the bike and get out of here because I don't want to wake up the neighbors too early on a weekend. So. <laughs> So as you guys can see by the wind here, uh, the wind is still getting around the T-Sport fairing that I have on Maximus. Maximus is my 2019 Street Bob. However, I got it without any fairing, so I put that fairing on myself, uh, mounted it to the bike using a uh, Memphis Shades bracket. They did not have the fairing from Memphis Shade at the time that I bought the bracket. So I ended up going with this one and I have this one on the bike for now, but I am going with a bigger fairing in the near future as the fairing that will stay on Maximus. This T-Sport fairing will not be the fairing that stays on the bike for the long haul. Here in the morning, uh, this time on the freeway, it was pretty windy and uh, 60 degrees. It was still kind of chilly, but just with the long sleeve t-shirt and the hoodie, it wasn't too bad. Uh, once the sun started coming out a little more, things warmed up a bit and I felt better. Eventually later on, you'll see I'll just take off the hoodie and the day warmed up, uh, I think into the 80s or so. So it wasn't a super hot day either, which was amazing for the long ride and the bike. And we finally meet up with Pedro at the gas station he was waiting for us at, and we're gonna top off and kick off the ride. Morning. What's up, man? Ready to ride? I gotta stretch it out and uh, warm up again. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so we're definitely gonna top off now. I think this bike only has uh, 3.1 gallons of fuel, and this bike is a street glide, so it has like five and some change, I think. So we're definitely gonna top off now. asking if I went on a car wash. I don't think we need that. Okie dokie. So let's get some 93 in this. So, I don't know about you guys. This is something that I always do. On oh, my sport bikes too. It's like, if I need to top off, I always sit on the bike and bring it up right to top off the tank as much as possible. I don't know if that makes a, such a huge difference, but something that I do you guys let me know if you do the same thing or what I think I usually see a lot of people uh, topping off their bikes while they're on the kickstand so I don't know are we leaving some some uh, fuel on the table there for a ride or is, is it really not that big of a deal what do you guys think there we go bang comes to the brim Gas, gas cap back on. There's that thing in the station. This gentleman right here was fully suited, so I figure I was gonna see him on the road later, probably headed in the same direction we were, and there he was. I saw him a few times in a couple of turns and a couple of stops with a few other bikes. I guess his own crew uh, carving some turns and stuff. Uh, we saw a lot of motorcycles on this ride. It seems to be a very, very popular ride. Uh, especially on the weekends we saw cars and all kinds of fun vehicles you'll see here on the video later throughout the ride definitely definitely a really good ride uh, some uh, somewhat challenging turns uh, especially if you're not used to the ride if it's your first time doing it I guess if you're a beginner rider just pace yourself and go slow because a lot of the turns are going to be on a downhill and then on an uphill depending on which direction you're going and the turns close pretty sharp at some points even though they appear open at first and then they just kind of take a more acute turn so if you're a beginner just uh, be careful and take it slow at least a couple times until you get to know the area a little better and uh, definitely don't go faster than your skills uh, permit you to and uh, you should be good. A lot of cool cars in the ride that was like a 50s uh, Chevy or something like that I think it was I didn't have a uh, time to take a good look at it as we crossed paths on the road but we ran into a Shelby Cobra, a blue one later, uh, getting some turns. And then later you'll see on the video when we stopped to eat, uh, it was parked at the restaurant that we went to. Uh, it must be a kid car, uh, but still an amazing looking car and it sounded amazing. So I think the towns that we cross, or at least a couple of towns that we cross on the way to uh, Leaky were uh, Medina and Vanderpool, I believe. Uh, they had some events at a couple of these towns where the whole town was out there and uh, 
those cars and bikes and uh, kind of like an outdoor flea market type thing going on but uh, yeah a lot of people just having a good time early on Saturday morning As you guys can see, Pedro was just jamming on the road for all these stray sections on the way there on his radio, dancing and uh, having a great time on a Saturday, getting warmed up for those turns, man. For me, it's always been not just the joy that I felt as a rider riding any of my bikes in the past, but always when you go on a ride with others, seeing them enjoy the ride and whatnot. All right, guys, so we are in Vanderpool, Texas now. We are about 15 miles from Leaky where we're gonna stop again and top off on the gas tank before we head into the Three Sisters Loop. This here is on the intersection of, uh, I believe this, uh, so the 337 West. So we're already on the 337, so it looks like the intersection of 337 and the uh, 187 and this is the Lost Maples country store it's a gas station it's got the whole cabin country look uh, I believe they have a RV parking in the back it look like restrooms and they have a store in here you guys can hear very very quiet and peaceful area we passed a bunch of antelope uh, a few miles back and obviously this is just uh, a bunch of ranches and stuff like that so all right we're gonna get back on the road and get some gas in 15 miles and hit the three sisters here are the bikes it's been a nice nice very cool ride the entire time. Pedro's been jamming to music, having a good time. So, catch you guys out there. So as you can see here, you see the bikes uh, just turning here on the roads, all the motorcycles headed to the same uh, roads, the same loop, the Twisted Sisters or the Three Sisters. Uh, like I said before, uh, you guys are going to see uh, a bunch of other bikes here in the video while we're in the turns in the canyons, but uh, trust me, there was way more bikes in the videos and stuff that uh, obviously I had to cut out because the video will be just too long uh, so I think the loop is somewhere around a hundred miles I know there's a supposedly a section of the loop that it's about 15 miles of about 65 turns in just 15 miles so it was a pretty good uh, set of turns uh, no doubt So you see a lot of these uh, passes where they have been cut into the hills uh, for the road to go through, uh, going up and down and through the hills in this uh, area 
uh, there's magnificent views, uh, there's a lot of areas on the road where there's no guardrail, and there's other areas where there's a guardrail and a pretty steep drop off. So you'll be able to enjoy the views, but make sure you're paying attention to the road, uh, especially if it's your first time going through here. And, uh, you'll be able to soak in the views uh, regardless, there's plenty to see. I will make sure that your tires are good to go and your brakes are obviously in good working order. And a lot of the turns here, you're gonna see turns that have a 50 and 60 mile an hour uh, speed limit. Uh, however, once you get into the hills here in the canyons, uh, there was uh, definitely at least a couple turns that I can remember that it was as low as like 10 mile an hour, uh, at least it was what was posted. Uh, and most of them are going to be uh, between 15, 20 mile an hour, uh, 25 or 30, I uh, can't remember if there was 25 or whatnot. but. You're gonna see plenty in the 15 and 20 mile an hour uh, range. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Uh, it's a good uh, sign of what's to come ahead when you see a sign with a low speed limit. Uh, it will give you a little bit of a hint of like how sharp the, ten the turn is gonna be. And uh, especially if you're going downhill into one of these turns, uh, you want to keep that into account. Uh, there was some gravel here and there and some dirt. Uh, I didn't see a lot of it, at least not on this one ride, but I did see a lot of areas where uh, there was uh, big rocks uh, on the road uh, and gravel and dirt. So I can definitely uh, see that always being there because of the side of the hill, it's right there on the road and any dirt or debris that falls from there is gonna end up in the road very, very easy. So pay attention to that too, uh, especially if you're leaning in one of the turns and you hit some gravel. Um, yeah, you wanna see that coming and be ready for it. I want to say I probably uh, did a lot of uh, second and third gear uh, riding through all these uh, uh, turns, especially on the lower speeds, uh, which most of them are. So yeah, I think I uh, pretty much live between second and third gear around all these uh, turns here, uh, downhill and uphill. And I gotta say, this area reminded me a lot of uh, Palomar Mountain in Southern California. When I lived there, I had a Yamaha R1 and used to ride it on the weekends in Palomar Mountain uh, every weekend. And I think Palomar Mountain obviously has a lot more uh, technical turns and the terrain is more steep, whether you're going downhill or uphill. But I definitely uh, was reminded of uh, riding in that area uh, back when I was in California for sure. So it's definitely a, an area full of turns and you definitely need a little bit of uh, experience or take it slow uh, one turn at a time and not get distracted and you'll be good. take a corner up here uh, coming up on the video you're gonna see a gentleman on the side of the road with an umbrella and his car parked there and I've seen this before in California too there's people that like to go out here and see the bikes and this guy had a huge uh, camera with a big lens so he was uh, taking pictures of the bikes as they were coming around the corners and when we finished the ride at the end of the day, on our way back, uh, he was still there. So there he is. Uh, 
yeah he was he had a big camera there uh, taking some uh, amazing pictures I'm sure of like all the bikes coming around the turns one very important thing that I didn't want to forget to tell you guys especially if you've never been riding in an area uh, with canyon roads and whatnot similar to this area is uh, there's a lot of the turns where you cannot see around the turn because you're going uphill or the turn is too uh, narrow and because of the walls along the, the side of the road and whatnot so just keep in mind that you know you don't want to go too fast for your skills and then end up on the other lane as you're coming around a turn because the other vehicle coming the other way may very well be doing the same thing i've seen this before and that is very very easy to cause an accident uh obviously a head-on collision of some sort uh so make sure you stay in your lane and uh within your skill set in every turn Another thing to be careful here on this ride is that we ran into a lot of cyclists, a lot of bicycles, uh, like whole crews of bicycles going up and down the hills here on the road. And these roads are already very narrow between the wall and the cliff. So as you can imagine, you'll see here in the video, every time there was bicycles on the road, especially when you're coming around a turn and you can see on the other side and all of a sudden there's a cyclist going in the same direction you are in your lane or on the other way um, so you have to be atten attentive to that type of stuff because you don't want to come up too fast around a turn and not have time to react and hit somebody on a bicycle or walking This ride was full of areas where you're in the turns in the canyons in between rocks and then you have other amazing areas like this that are fully shaded, covering trees, uh, a lot of great areas all throughout. And here we're finally making it to Leaky where we're going to top off in this gas station. Uh, this seems to be the main gas station here where all the bikes uh, top off before they hit the twisties so after we top off here is when we actually begin the three sisters ride or the twisted sisters ride everything so far was beautiful and full of turns but this here is the beginning of the loop so after that gas station we got back on the 337 west and we took that all the way until we hit the 336 and took that north until the 335 and then we got on the 335 east and looped our way back and ended up back in Leakey, Texas. As you see here, I had already taken off my hoodie at the gas station before we hit the three sisters and the temperature was now I believe in the high 70s getting okay, to 80s so it was a lot warmer and it was cool the bike was able to stay cool and it wasn't a super hot day so that helped a lot with a ride like this where you're constantly uh, between second and third gear and just moving up and down all these hills even more so for B-Twins that have no fans or liquid cool or radiators or whatnot. Obviously sport bikes or other type of motorcycles like that are gonna do a little better with the temps. But on these Harleys, you definitely uh, gotta keep the temps in mind to take care of your beautiful bikes and uh, make sure that everything is running good to go for many rides come
So I'm running this bike now on the factory brakes. Uh, I am going to be upgrading the brakes on this bike. Remember the better of a brake system you have, the more effective they run, the more you'll be able to enjoy a ride, especially in the turns, you'll be able to come up faster and still stop even better uh, as you need to, to negotiate the turns. But when you're running on factory brakes, uh, make sure that you get used to your bike and don't come in too hot on the turns and then not be able to uh, stay in the turn. So Highway 337 West and 336 North, if I remember correctly, had uh, a lot more turns. They were definitely packed with turns and twisties, uh, more so than once we got on the 335 to loop back east. Uh, obviously, there's still turns there, plenty of them, but a lot of the turns were now uh, wider longer turns higher speed turns and there was a lot more uh, s longer straightaways uh, more than uh, 336 and 337 uh, there was definitely a lot more turns in those two roads than on 335 at least in the area of the loop that we rode This cyclist here, I thought somebody had gone down and I don't know if somebody did go down or not. I was getting ready to stop, but once we went through them, everybody was fine. There was nobody down. Uh, it seemed like they were doing some work on one of the bicycles, but as you saw, there was a lot of cyclists right there in the road, a very, very narrow road. And they even had a vehicle parked there blocking the lane. So we had to move over. So as I was saying before, uh, make sure that when you're traveling and riding these roads, uh, especially on a car, uh, make sure that you're uh, keeping in mind that there's a lot of these cyclists here, at least this weekend there was, and uh, yeah, just uh, take it slow and uh, make sure everybody stays safe and uh, older people are going to be out there too on these turns, from cyclists to cars to a bunch of other bikes, so better to be safe and uh, be able to make these rides happen all the time then have something happen, uh, the bike go down or God forbid, anything worse than that. You can see there's a lot of areas where you feel like you can open up the bike a bit more and the turn that's coming doesn't seem too bad but it's going to be uphill or around a wall and you can't see the other side of the turn so again uh, don't go as fast as you think you can go because uh, you have to be able to see around it uh, before you take that step When we are on a plain uh, level area and you're taking some turns and you know how to take a turn at a certain speed, that is one thing. Uh, this is not a track and it's not an open area where you can see around the turns. So that's what I'm referring to. Uh, make sure that you are keeping that in mind and not take these turns as you're used to taking other turns because in a lot of these turns you can't see around them so it's not the same
there was definitely a couple of uh, big group rides out here uh, wherever these people were they were in large groups and uh, yeah it was just one after the other coming around the turn so they were having a good time a bunch of cool bikes Now I have to say out of all the bikes in total that I saw on this ride this day, uh, again there was four bikes and there was the cruiser type motorcycles and if I had to say which brand or company or what type of motorcycle I saw the most of uh, percentage wise of all the bikes that I saw during the entire ride. Uh, yeah, it was by far Harley Davidson. There was uh, just uh, a ton of Harleys up in these turns for sure, up and down. So I believe this is the area here where we started heading back east on 335 uh, to loop back east, back to Leaky. And on this road was where I started to see more uh, longer straightaways uh, and higher speed, wider turns, uh, a lot of 45 to 60 mile an hour turns and uh, definitely a lot more uh, better visibility around the turns. Uh, 336 and 337 were definitely more like deep in the canyons. This seemed to be like kind of higher and uh, more open. One thing to keep into account too, uh, throughout all these three roads, the pavement is not the best. There's a lot of uh, bumps, a lot of, uh, I guess, just missing pavement on the road and whatnot. So that's just another thing to keep into account that, uh, you know, when you're going uh, hard on a turn, and you're gonna hit some of these bumps or uneven pavement and that can cause some vibration in your bike and maybe maybe even lose some traction depending on your tires and whatnot so just be safe on that and here we have completed the loop the three sisters ride the twisted sisters ride here we were now back in leaky and we decided to come try the food at the bent rim in Leaky, this seems to be the place to stop at for bikers by far. I saw other places that had a lot of bikes parked outside, but this place was by far just all bikes. Coke Zero or a Diet Coke? Coke? That works. And then, yeah, this Thanks. stuff. Dile. Five. Dile, brother. Five. Es mi turno. Me toca. So we made it here to the Ben Rim. My first time here. I'm trying the Fat Bob Burger. I'm getting the flies over it. Then, Pedro got the Fat Bob Burger too, without fries. And I got some sweet potato fries, so let's have some lunch and I'll get back to you guys.
here we were gonna start headed back southeast leaving the Ben Rim and Leaky and hit the road back making our way towards San Antonio Texas we made one more stop at Borney Texas to fuel up one more time before making it back to San Antonio as you guys can see behind me there was the Shelby Cobra parked the blue one uh, it looked amazing Texas on the way back now so we still have about 40 minutes back to where I stay in San Antonio it's been a long ride it's been some beautiful roads the burger at the Ben Rim was actually surprisingly good and the spice in it actually came from the bread if I'm not mistaken it was a jalapeno bread and it had bacon it was good stuff so we're making one last, last uh, pit stop here and uh, we're gonna get back on the road and get back home so it's been a good day, long ride.